Christchurch District Energy Scheme Progress Report. Um, moved, uh, Phil Clearwater, seconded by somebody, uh, Pauline Cotter. Is there any discussion? Uh, Paul? Yeah, um, we received a, re a report on, on this through uh, uh, Civic Building Limited, and uh, just it's just a, I mean, the idea is actually really, really good. Uh, I just have some concerns around some of the things they, they have actually asked uh, of us to do, uh, and that's around uh, our own current infrastructure and uh, how that has moved off. So I think the uh, healthy scepticism, we will be uh, wanting to know a bit more information on how that's going to be formed so we can be informed when we make our decision. Yeah, I, well, there won't be any decisions made until until we've got agreement. What falls meaning there, moving our infrastructure? They're looking at a hub for uh, uh, this area here, which will involve the uh, potentially the um, this building, uh, the art gallery, the museum, uh, potentially what happens across over the road. And uh, we have, uh, you know, a few million or many millions of dollars worth of current infrastructure. And it was really unclear uh, how that... Um, how that got uh, paid out, or if it didn't get paid out, or um, uh, and you know, uh, been a current joint venture with uh, Natahu, um, the ownership of that uh, asset when this new system comes in. So we were a bit confused, would be probably the word, uh, on how that was going to be uh, rolled out. Uh, Phil, oh, well, do, Mike, do you want to come to the table? Because I mean, it's obviously a significant issue. Do you want to speak, Phil, first, or do you want... Yeah. All right. Um, so thank you. Um, so this, this is progressing along. Uh, I suppose um, the district energy scheme um, is sort of moving through that whole process of refining exactly uh, what assets are there, how we utilise those assets, what are the returns. Now, uh, we had a more detailed, I suppose, a, a, a further progress report uh, at which Councillor... Clearwater and Councillor um, Cotter were at um, just the other day, and we'll be bringing a report through to Council on this matter. But um, so yes, I mean part of the whole value chain process is about what infrastructure is committed into the project versus what we take out in terms of savings, and, and obviously becoming a, a keystone partnership. The key a key piece of asset and key key piece of kit that we can contribute, obviously, are the the gas supplies at the moment from the landfill and the trigen plant. Now the, that is owned by the council, not by the JV. So we're in greater flexibility to play with that piece of kit as we like to contribute to this. So very mindful of those costs, but also looking at the, both the short and long term savings we can get from participate, participating. Just on top of that, just um, we have a very large investment in this building, uh, obviously with another another party. And, uh, and I'd be concerned if uh, our assets uh, were moved to another entity, that our energy assets were moved to another entity which affected the value of this building in a negative way. And I can see uh, Peter's got his finger up on there. Uh, our feedback has been that it will increase the value of the ability to tenant the building. It's seen as a, as a way in which any incoming tenant would get cheaper energy. So it actually increases the value of the asset. It's one of the advantages. So I just I think that's the that's the part that was missing in, in the briefing we got. So uh, whilst we were supportive, there was a healthy bit of scepticism in there. So it'd be good just to fill that void on on that cost benefit to uh, to our, our ownership of this building and maybe others. Yeah, Phil. Um, look, the environmental committee particularly wants the information to come back to us as elected members, and that's going to happen. Um, and and like the whole whole purpose of and the early briefings too showed that it is really about lower cost energy <coughs> and different and different sources of energy. So in fact, we become more resilient and not not dependent on just just one source. And it you know it it's. It's, it's critical, though, that we have a base for, for all of this, like an energy hub, and it has to go somewhere. So that, that information, though, will be brought back to us by staff. But that is, and it's not, I mean, the original staff recommendation was to delegate authority That's to right. enter into the agreement. That is not going to be no, proceeded the within the this. No, the committee recommendation did not include that. So yeah. the committee recommendation is that it comes back to us as elected members. So it can't be signed until no. it comes back. That's right. Yeah. Yanni? 
in the report, probably the most depressing um, section is 4.6, which says the hospital has a substantial investment in coal-fired boilers, and they'll continue, because they're actually really bad for our environment. And I would have thought one of the biggest cost um, advantages to this whole district energy scheme would be based around the hospital. Did, did you guys, is there anything that, um, like, you, because, because if you read 4.91, you see Sarah basically uh, saying they're only a facilitator, but could we talk to the government about the hospital? Because it just seems such a lost opportunity. It just says the immediate future, and it specifically yeah. says that the proposal for the health hub is for a progressive move to a more renewable energy generation yeah. through yeah. the introduction of wood chip fuel and a new aquifer heat pump. So I, I don't think, I, I think it's the immediate, i.e. they have... Yeah the discharge rights at the moment, they are continuing with that in the immediate future, but longer term they want to move to a more sustainable source of energy. Is that, am I reading that correctly? Perhaps Helen can perhaps answer that. Um. Yes, so the, the development for the health hub at the hospital was subject to quite detailed negotiations this week, mm. and the hospital have, um, have moved beyond where council is at actually, so that hub is going going ahead probably more quickly than ours, yeah. and a part of that negotiation does indeed include a ground source heat pump system. So their new buildings and the extra re energy for heating and cooling will be supplied by that. And they also have plans to convert one of their coal boilers to a wood-fired boiler, and that's, that will happen quite quickly, and then transition to much more renewable fuels over the next 20 to 30 years. Mm. Um, having said that, uh, it, it's true that they will continue with coal yeah. in the short term. Yeah. Um, Pauline? It's worth noting that the, the hub is where the, well, where the energy is produced and then it's networked out. That's, um, it can be tapped into um, as time progresses by other people wanting to access it and benefit from it. So that's, that's really worth considering. And also the fact that um, our landfill is, gas is a, a finite resource. So we have to consider alternatives. And our ground source is, is a great uh, asset that we have there. So, um, but I think, Paul, you're right to, to, to waive those, um, those concerns, and I think we'll get more information as it progresses. Yep. Uh, Tim? Just um, 4.9.3. Council staff noted that the main drivers for participating in the DES were to facilitate energy efficiency alongside greater uptake of renewable energy. So I think we should also be including cost savings there. I mean, this, this building is what probably the most green efficient building in, in the area, therefore so the District Health Board, everyone else is playing catch up. But we're also looking at leasing the, the, the as, as Paul mentioned the, some of the items in this building to the DES or, or selling one of the options. So are we sacrificing to be part of this? I mean the situation we're in at the moment, we've got to make sure that every penny that we save or we're looking at spending has to be um, made sure that it, we're doing the best we can with them. So what are your views on that? That's right. But so yeah, so the, the, the reality with our own energy assets is that we produce more energy than we can possibly use. Mm. So by participating in the, in the DES, we also participate in the profit share from the use of that additional energy. That at the moment, um, I mean, we're flaring landfill gas, for example. Uh, we're not getting the most landfill gas we could out of that landfill gas field. So by improving those and by improving the operation of our, our capital assets here and being able to provide energy outside, we, we will actually share in the revenue stream. So that's, sorry, no, 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 no. So sorry. That, that's measured per kilowatt or whatever, so if we are producing more than our, our DES partners, we get paid a bigger return? The, the how, details of how the this? financial um, arrangements work yep. haven't been worked okay. through. That's so it. what we're doing at the moment, we've got the technical specifications, so we know what's possible, yep. and then how that's packaged up in terms of the leasing or selling and then pricing arrangements for energy and then um, potential profit share yep. in the DES company is for um, Peter Gutzel and and his uh, analysts to have a look at. Perfect. Okay. Thank I would, sorry. Just, I think, I mean, the, the figures that we're starting to see shows a direct operational saving to us starting from year one. So I think that, that that's a positive takeout for the council. It, it, we need to think about the assets that we own as being tools that actually util, allow greater energy utilisation of which we can reap benefits beyond the current site. Um, 
and, and I think the, the, the key thing that we need to think about is balancing also the opportunity to not only make savings and be more efficient, but also show leadership in the community. Because I think this is one of the key, this, is, this along with the hospital is a key hub that can actually demonstrate how a DES could work, and uh, we need to grasp that as well. Absolutely agree, but not at the cost of the rate pass. So I do think that that should be one of the, the you know, the way we're looking at saving should be included in those two, with a third driver in those. Absolutely, two. yeah. That's, that's, it has to stack up, it has to stack up for us, and, and, it, and it really has to stack up for the private market if they're going to be persuaded to invest in this as well. So that's a big driver for all these guys. and. Um, for, for those of you who have met them, I mean, the people driving this are international experts who have run some very successful schemes internationally and delivered some fantastic benefits. So, mm. you know, we've got confidence in the groups that we were dealing with um, that they can deliver on this. The so 7.1 does pick that up, um, satisfactory energy supply agreement and a reduction in operating costs. So yeah. I think that yeah. that's pretty much covered off. Yep. Also, they have local successful schemes. Going yes. now yep. around an evening. They do. Yep. So I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, that the report as a whole be adopted. Again, Phil Clearwater, seconded by Jimmy Chen. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you.